Good morning. If you were here last year, on this stage, we announced an expanded relationship between IBM and Hortonworks. And our focus was around data science. How do we bring the next generation of analytics to the Hadoop ecosystem? And I'm very proud to announce that after a year of hard work, a lot of engineering, we now have hundreds of clients that are using IBM data science experience along with Hortonworks. It's been a huge change in how clients are leveraging Hadoop, getting value out of their Hadoop instance, so we're very proud of this partnership and the progress we've made. But I also realized this is just the beginning because data science is just one of the building blocks for how an organization gets to maturity around AI. Let's take an example. So in the year 1950, there was no interstate system in the United States. Getting from point to point was incredibly difficult. There was a decision to invest in the interstate highway system. And now, 80 years later, we have 48,000 miles of highways, $400 billion plus of investment. And while it certainly changed the ability to move from city to city, things like overpasses, underpasses, bridges, reduced a lot of congestion, maybe not here in the Bay Area yet, but that was the intent. But what's often overlooked is how it changed commerce. It didn't just change transportation, it changed commerce. Rest areas, gas stops, the whole salty snack food industry probably would not exist, at least not in its current form, without the interstate highway system. So this connective tissue between what was before a bunch of disparate cities really revolutionized commerce. I think where we are in data today is where we were with the highway system in the 50s. It's a bunch of different silos, it's a bunch of different islands, and in order to get to this AI future, we have to think about how do we modernize the data platform, much like Rob Bearden spoke to, to give you access to data in ways that you've never had before. But first, think about where you are on your journey in data and analytics. Many of you have worked on the left side of this slide. You're taking cost out of your operations using data. You're modernizing your data warehouse, leveraging modern BI tools. But most organizations probably sit about in the middle, maybe to the left side. The right side is how do you move towards self-service analytics? And then ultimately, how do you get to the point of AI, where you're using AI to drive new business models, new invention for your company and in your industry. Use this slide with your teams. See if you get a view of where do we sit today as an organization. Because if you don't understand where you want to go or where you are today, it's very hard to get there. I like to say there is no AI without IA, meaning you cannot get to this AI future without the information architecture to support that. And the reason I call it a ladder is the AI ladder is about different building blocks that you have to accomplish with your data in order to get to AI. Just think of it in reverse. There's, you can't do AI without machine learning. You can't do machine learning without analytics. And you can't do analytics without the right data and information architecture. If you're in this room, I know you're a believer in that because you've invested in Hortonworks, modernizing your data environment. But now the challenge is, how do you start to take those steps towards this new future? We decided to tackle this problem in IBM and say, how can we unite the work that we've done in data science along with Hortonworks to help clients move along this AI ladder? But it started with a couple key beliefs. This is our view of what's happening in the world of data and analytics. First of all, containers will revolutionize the use of data and application architectures, for that matter, in every enterprise. We've become big committers, contributors to the Kubernetes project. We believe that containers will really be the spark that sets off this era of modernization. Secondly, clients are going to modernize enterprise out. 
That means start where your data is and then move to the cloud as you're ready, as you're comfortable. And I'll be honest, that's a very different view than others hold in the market. Amazon actually has an 18-wheeler that comes to your office and says, we're taking all your data and moving it to the cloud. That's the very opposite of enterprise out. That's why I don't think that approach is going to work. Our strategy is modernize, enterprise out, use containers, then move your data to the cloud as you're ready. Machine learning will automate the AI ladder, help you move along those different steps. And then we believe in one architecture. As you go down the path of private cloud, it has to be the same architecture that you're delivering on public cloud. That's why we think Kubernetes offers a great common denominator for doing that. Because as you get to this future, you're going to want seamless interaction between private cloud and public cloud. In March, we announced and in May we released IBM Cloud Private for Data. This is our attempt to grossly simplify the process of data. Think back to the highway example. We are building the interstate highway system for all your data, which is everything integrated in one place. Governance of your data embedded in there. The features of data science experience are there. And Hadoop is a first class citizen. As part of our relationship with Hortonworks, we've prioritized integration with Hadoop, and you've seen what Hortonworks is also doing around containers as a first class citizen as part of this architecture. We bring things like Big SQL to federate data across public cloud, private cloud, any data repository. If you want to modernize your old warehouse, and many of you do, Big SQL plus Hortonworks and a data science layer on top of that is how you accomplish that. And then we've also focused on the infrastructure level. Machine learning and AI is only as valuable as your compute infrastructure. So with Power AI and what we're doing around GPU acceleration, we enable the best possible capabilities for delivering high performance AI. And you can actually see it happening in the market. Two months ago, MasterCard announces the formation of a new company called Truata. Truata has to exist in this world of data privacy. MasterCard has a huge analytics business, but often creating analytic outcomes from personal credit card swipes, it could put you at odds with things like GDPR or data privacy regulation. They established Truata as a third-party company to do all of the data anonymization, all of the data privacy. It is the only entity in the world where if your data is in Truata, you're GDPR compliant. They've made it that simple. We had the opportunity to design the architecture for Truata, for how would we actually deal with data at that level of scale, not only from the credit card industry, which is you know, three billion plus events a year, but any company that wants to come to Truata to ensure their GDPR compliance. So as we went to work on this architecture, we focused on the Hortonworks data platform, along with our unified governance capabilities for data masking, data privacy, and then data science experience. So how you could build machine learning models to automate many of these processes. But look, rather than hearing from me, I think sometimes it's just best to see it. And so with that, I want to introduce you to Vice President and Chief Design Officer for IBM, IBM Hybrid Cloud, Aaron Bomick. Aaron, welcome. Thank you. We'd love to see what you have to share with everybody today. Sure. So I'm going to set it up by saying that there are three huge challenges in an end-to-end -end data journey. Finding data, trusting data, and operationalizing the data. With IBM Cloud Private for Data, we're changing the game. We are giving you the power to interact with enterprise data like never before. Let me show you how. I'm going to play the role of a data scientist, and I've been given a task to create a model to predict mortgage rate payment defaults. So I'm going to log into the platform. And right on the top, I see immediate value. I have access to tasks and functions and notifications. I also have KPIs that are meaningful to me, to my role. I could customize the experience. It's a very role-based experience for me. Moving on, I have access to the power of the platform at my fingertips, whether it's interacting with data, my data, data that's shared with me, federated data from different sources, 
cloud, on-prem, data lakes, or access to different parts of the data. For example, data catalog, setting up data connections, running data transformation jobs. And eventually, when I have the data, I can analyze it to get more insights, whether through dashboarding and eventually building and operationalizing models. So all from a single platform. I'm going to start the journey by searching for the data. Now, I remember uh, that the data I'm looking for is in Hortonworks data, but I don't remember the name. I'm going to do a search. There's no search results. Now, at this point, if I'm a data scientist, I start praying because I'm done. But with IBM Cloud Private for Data, we're changing it. We are letting you have a path out. For example, you can access new data by requesting for new data. But more importantly, you can go ahead and discover assets that are in remote data sets. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go to the discover assets aspect and set up a connection. I'm going to set up a, a remote connection with HTTP. And I'm going to also turn on a few configurations like assigning business terms automatically. I'm going to initiate the discover process right now. And the assets are discovered. And now, if I go back and do a search again for the same thing, hopefully it shows up. Voila. We see the connection. We also see two different data files, two CSV files. And the interesting part is it's also showing me data quality. Now, this is gold for me as a data scientist. I'm getting data that's kind of trusted. So I'm going to go a little bit more and start looking into the details now. So I'm going to go and look at the relationship and the data lineage a little bit. For example, I see that the email address term is auto-assigned. This data file is governed by a policy. So it's secure data. That's, that's lovely. I'm going to now go ahead and add this data that I trust to a project. It's a project I'm working on. So I'm going to add it on. This is a project. It's a collection of assets, notebooks, models, dashboards, so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and drill a little bit deeper into the data to see if I can get different insights from it to ensure that I have the right data to work with. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to see some pre-built dashboards. But I can easily um, go ahead and change a few data visualizations to see if I get different insights. At this time, I can also go and start a transform process, bring in data joins from different places, enrich my data set. So now I have sort of worked the data. I've put it in a place where I can create a model. I'm going to go back to my projects. And I'm going to start looking at my notebooks. Now, notebooks is a bread and butter for me. This is where I live. It's integrated right into the platform. A single tool. I don't need to go between tools to do my job. Here, I can do several things. I can build a classification model. I can change the code, tweak the code, test it. And when I'm ready, I'm going to save it to a, a repository. Now, that's not all. I can follow the trail here. I'm going to go ahead and check on my deployment manager on how the deployment is doing. So it's a quick access here. I go to the deployment manager. Looks like there have been two deployments. And it's running pretty good. So now I feel pretty strongly that this is going to be a good model. I'm going to go ahead and try to publish it. So I go to the list of models I want to pick. Again, back to my projects, single cohesive access. I pick the model I want to publish. And it's an easy form to submit. So I'm going to give it a name. And while I'm doing that, I could also restrict the visibility to internal, external catalog, make it public, private. And when I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and kickstart the publish process. It'll kickstart the workflow. And when it's approved, I can go ahead and search for it. So I'm going to search for mortgage. That was the name of the model. And I trigger the search. And it's available in the governed secure data catalog. So there it is, folks, an end-to-end -end data journey from finding data, working with data, and publishing a model all under three to four minutes. There's no other platform that can do this. And it's being done because it's an integrated, scalable, cohesive, and dare I say, a self-service platform. We have truly made data simple and accessible. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Arne. Hopefully that brings it to life. It's a new way of working with your enterprise data, 
that makes it very simple, very elegant. We are very appreciative of our relationship with Hortonworks because it gives us the opportunity to deliver these types of innovations for you, clients who have put a lot of data inside Hadoop. What's most exciting to me is this is just the beginning. As we think a few years out, we see SQL the world becoming possible, where you can write a SQL query and hit any device, any server, anywhere in the world. Pervasive AI is coming. Data as utility, being able to provision any data you need in two minutes or less, no matter where it resides. We are just getting started on this analytics journey. And I think all of you in this room, you've taken that key first step towards modernizing what you're doing in your data environment. So you, are, you will be the leaders of this next era as we continue to modernize data and analytics and make it accessible to the world. So with that, thank you for your time. Appreciate it.